So we just completed the restoration on this 1965 Series 2A, and I just finished up the test drive miles on it, and it will be offered for sale on our website. This vehicle has been restored to our version 4 specs. So what does that mean? What are those specs? So let me just share my design philosophy with you about how I build these Land Rovers. So my goal is always to build vehicles that are as close to original aesthetically, but improved mechanically. And this doesn't mean adding a 400 horsepower Chevy V8 and enormous tires. It just means subtle improvements to make the vehicle operate better on today's roads. But we're not going to leave any original parts that have known design flaws. And the early Series 2A certainly does have its shortcomings. It has uh, single master cylinder drum brakes that have to be manually adjusted. The fuel system on the original vehicles is prone to vapor lock. And that's, uh, you know, today's 10% ethanol gasoline is to blame for that. Uh, the positive ground electrical system is not really the best design. It's extremely stiff suspension uh, that was really made to haul uh, have much heavier uh, loads than most people are using them for today. Parts that are prone to rotting out like the frame and galvanic corrosion between uh, the steel and the aluminum body panels. And of course with the transmission, first and second gear are not synchronized. So that means you need to double clutch and most people don't know how to do this and really don't want to take the time to learn on a very expensive vehicle. So we correct the problems on these Series 2As not by reinventing the wheel and putting in uh, completely out of place drivetrains. I mean, we just take Series 3 parts and fit them to the Series 2A or Defender parts, parts that Land Rover already improved. We just fit them to the Series 2A. There's some cases where we need to use completely modern parts, like for example, electronic fuel injection. 10% ethanol gasoline did not exist when these vehicles were in use. Now it's really a necessity to add electronic fuel injection to make these vehicles run properly. So the result is a vehicle that looks original, but mechanically, I like to say they're like three-quarter scale defenders because they're uh, six inches narrower track width, uh, five inch shorter wheelbase, 15 inches shorter overall. So the vehicle is a little bit smaller than a defender, but as you'll see, we use a lot of defender parts in our restorations. So first of all, let's talk about the engine. So I like to rebuild the original engine that came in the Land Rover, if possible. I want to keep that engine with the Land Rover. I don't want to split those up and just update it so that it's viable on today's roads. So these engines were basically available all the way up to the early 90s in Defender. So in the, the early 90s spec Defenders, you could get a 2.5 liter petrol engine. These are two and a quarter, but you can get a 2.5 liter petrol engine. So we're putting in a later 2.5 liter Defender cam, hardened valve seats, uh, even like the valve guides, we're putting in the later style with the umbrella seals. We're, we're putting in a 75 amp alternator from a Defender. Uh, we're really trying to build the engine to Defender specs and then just taking it a little bit beyond by going with electronic fuel injection. So with fuel injection, the computer does all the thinking for you. You don't need to fiddle with the carburetor. You don't even need to pull the choke. It does everything for you to keep the engine running in its optimum air fuel ratio. So the computer is making adjustments every second to keep this engine running the best it can. So this means on really hot days, it won't vapor lock, it'll run fine. On really cold days, it'll actually start up. I've started these up in zero degree weather. All right, so it is about two degrees this morning. Here we go, let's try this. And it starts right up. Another one of our goals is rust resistance. So you'll find that with our full galvanizing package, everything that's steel under the vehicle that can be galvanized is galvanized. It also has some stainless steel components like a stainless steel gas tank and exhaust system. So something that you'll find on every one of our vehicles is a new frame. And it's not because the design of the frame was bad. Uh, in fact, it was a, a very strong but light design, um, but it's a box design and when salt and mud get inside the frame they tend to rot from the inside out and even when coming from a dry climate since the metal is fairly thin gauge on these frames you do find a lot of uh, cracks and metal fatigue so rather than risk it we just start with a new frame on every one of our builds so another thing that's important to us is the stance of the vehicle 
So these came with these really small skinny tires, 650-16s, and in some cases, 616s. We go with a 750-16, so it's still a very narrow tire, uh, but it's a little bit taller than factory, so these are 32-inch tires. We put a one-inch lift on the vehicle with some parabolic springs and old man emu shocks. So this raises the vehicle up just a little bit. Again, the stance is very important. Another uh, thing that factors into that is that we're using Defender tubeless wheels, so we don't have tubes uh, in the wheels. So these are 5.5 inches wide instead of five inches wide. And they also have a, a half inch wider offset. So the wheels are still tucked well under the wheel wells, which is really important. Um, there's nothing that looks worse than a series with really wide tires. So we got a nice tucked in look and we have a taller but still narrow tire, a slight lift, nothing too crazy. And all of this adds up to a vehicle that just looks proper and also rides really good. So I mentioned how the stance is really important. We use the original axle housings. We don't go to wider Defender axle housings or any craziness like that. We use the original axle housings, but that's about where the original uh, axle components stop because we use Defender diffs and we re-gear them to 375 to one. So that way we don't need to use an overdrive. The vehicles can cruise at 60 miles an hour on the highway. And first gear is really where you'd expect it to be. With the 470 to one gears, you're usually starting off in second in a lot of situations. With 375 to one, you're starting off in first like a normal car. Uh, we also use heavy duty ring and pinion gears front and back. We use 24 spline custom made half shafts that are hardened for the back. So essentially the rear axle in these vehicles is stronger than any factory Defender 90 axle. The front axle, we use reverse rotation, heavy duty ring and pinion gears. Cause again, the, these ring and pinion gears are a known weak point. So are the spider gears and by far the weakest part on the entire series drivetrain are the half shafts. So um, the rear half shafts are upgraded to the 24 spline hardened units. We keep the 10 spline front uh, half shafts, uh, but we do add some locking hubs so that when you're driving around on normal roads, you can unlock the hubs and you won't be spinning over the diff and drive shaft. Some more Defender parts um, in the drivetrain. We use Defender four wheel disc brakes. So the latest version that was used from 1995 up till roughly around 2016 in Defender 90s. So four piston calipers in the front, two piston calipers in the back, a Defender master cylinder, series three power uh, brake pedal box. So as you can imagine in a 3000 pound vehicle like this, I mean, it stops on a dime. <laughs> it's uh, there, the brakes are by far the, one of the most overbuilt parts of these vehicles. And that's because safety is extremely important to us. We also take great pride in the body. So it's not just all about mechanicals to us. It's also about the body. And so we mock up these bodies on the new frame so that we can get everything to fit properly in bare metal. So we're not simply just repainting all the original parts and bolting them back to a new frame. We're making sure that everything fits properly on the new frame before it goes out to paint. So that means that all the doors will close properly. You'll have a uh, body alignment that's uh, much nicer than the original and essentially a vehicle that is just a little bit nicer than it would have looked when it rolled off the assembly line. But that's important to us. Uh, and of course the paint, we're painting both sides of every panel, unlike the factory that only painted the outside of the panels, which cause major galvanic corrosion. So to st also an another step to stop the galvanic corrosion, we're galvanizing as many steel parts as we can, like the hood frame to isolate it from the aluminum part with a layer of zinc. Um, so not only is it painted on the both sides, but it's also the steel parts are galvanized. So the body, the result is really a body that looks original, but is slightly more rust proof than original. So finally, the interior of the vehicle is very important to us. Again, we're shooting for originality, but with some slight improvements, like we're using late 2A 
fuel and temperature gauges with a semiconductor voltage stabilizer. It just works better than the original 2A gauges. Uh, it's a very slight aesthetic change, but a major improvement in reliability and, and accuracy. So uh, we, we are rebuilding the original speedometer to the vehicle. On the, in this case, we returned the original speedometer to zero, and I now have 300 des roughly 300 test drive miles on it. So for the interior, we keep the original seat upholstery, which is a vinyl called Elephant Hide, which is, again, really iconic. Um, also, the iconic banjo steering wheel is really important to us. Uh, and the, the, the result is really an interior that is nicer than original. The paint finishes on the inside are done just to the same standards as the outside, because that is your interior. So... The result is really a vehicle that's meant to be driven. It's not meant just to go to car shows. You know, we're going for aesthetically beautiful vehicles that are also drive as good as they look, and they're meant to be driven. These, these vehicles are really meant to be taken out on back roads and, and driven and used, and the drivetrain really speaks to that intended purpose, the, the, the amount of time and effort we've, we've gone into in getting these drivetrains um, improved to the best of our abilities really tells you that this is a vehicle that's meant to be driven. So what are the pros and cons of buying a Land Rover like this that's already restored versus restoring one? So first of all, if you restore a Land Rover with us, you get to pick your color. There's six different colors that we offer that are all original series colors. On a vehicle that we're selling, we're going to restore it to the original color that's stated on the heritage certificate. Another pro of buying a completed one on our website is that the vehicle is available immediately. You can simply purchase the vehicle and you can ship it back to your home and start driving it immediately. Um, a benefit of doing a restoration, the payments are broken up into 12 payments minus a $20,000 deposit. So it's a lot more palatable to own a restored Series 2A like this over uh, more payments rather than purchase one outright. If you already have a Land Rover that's in need of restoration, you could send that to us to be restored. Or if you want to buy the vehicle that's already completed, you could trade that vehicle into us and we could use it as a core for another restoration. So this vehicle is ready for immediate sale on our website. It's 100% ready to go. Just simply get in, turn the key, and drive it.